From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. Kim, the other thing that I think of when I remember that quote from President Biden that it's going to be a horrible two years is the subpoena power. Because in Congress, the majority party has subpoena power, the minority party does not. And so for two years, President Biden, his administration has been able to run without really facing the kind of investigations that the opposition party provides, the kind of oversight that the opposition party provides. And to that point, let's listen to a clip of Congressman Jim Jordan on Fox News last week. By far the most important is the Justice Department that's now political. You cannot have a political Justice Department and also have a free society, a free country. So that is the most important thing. And we're going we're gonna to dig into this. Martha, we have had, and I've said this many times, we've had now over 14 FBI agents come to us uh, asking for whistleblower status, talking about how political that place is. That has to change. Because if, if you have a political justice department, if you don't have equal treatment under the law, every single liberty we enjoy as Americans is in jeopardy. Kim, what's your view of this? So Jim Jordan laying out one avenue that a Republican House could investigate if Republicans retake that chamber. What's your view, Kim, of how Republicans should think about this and use their subpoena power if they get it back? There's going to be a huge appetite among some members to do this full time. If you think about all the different areas that Republicans have raised for concern, there's going to be people who want to investigate the Department of Justice and politicization, the FBI. There's going to be a desire to have more aggressive oversight of the IRS, given all the new funding that's gone there. The CDC and what happened happened with the science during lockdowns and the pandemic. Obviously, Hunter Biden, that's a huge one. I mean, you could go on and on. I think the concern here for Republicans is that they need to strike a balance with this. They will have sweeping power, in particular in the House, to issue subpoenas. It's a little bit more difficult to do that in the Senate, where sometimes in many committees you have to have both sides agree to send out a, a subpoena. But the House, it's unfettered. And yeah, they could be a full-time investigatory machine if they wanted to, but does that really serve them in the long term? I think that, yes, Americans want to see oversight and some very important questions answered about the inner workings of some of these agencies. And that is Congress's job to provide legislative oversight, meaning are these departments and agencies adhering to their overall guidelines and the rules and regulations and statutes? But if Republicans spend all of their time doing that and do not spend any time actually governing, they're going to blow it because there's a lot of Americans who want to see Congress working again in a substantive fashion, having committee work, having debates, having markups, coming up with legislation, showing that they can actually make things work. So I think that one piece of advice is don't overdo it. Another one is to keep it focused on the agencies and not make it personal. You know, one example, you can investigate Fauci or you can investigate the CDC. I think Americans would much more appreciate that you investigate the CDC and not try to use your power to demonize individuals etc. Yeah, I think maybe that's a good distinction to draw is to make them serious investigations, serious oversight, put serious members of the House in charge of these and focus them on the things that won Republicans the election. There's crime, there's inflation, there's immigration and the border crisis. But certainly a Republican House would have the opportunity to call up the Secretary of Homeland Security and put him on the spot, put him in the hot seat and ask him some real questions about what's happening at the border, what the Biden administration's policy is, and why it doesn't seem to be getting any better. And so, Kate, I mean, I think that the distinction Kim draws here is a really good one, and keep the investigations tethered to the kinds of things that won Republicans the House in the midterms, if indeed that's what happens. I agree. I would add another proviso, which is pick subjects where Republicans can explain the stakes in plain language to the public. The a couple that I would add to the list that we haven't discussed here, one would be Kevin Brady has made a good cause on ways and means about the IRS, looking at the IRS and, for instance, it, how it's been sending out letters about tax credits. Americans intuitively understand the IRS does not serve its constituency very well. So that's a place where I think they could take a look. And that hems to the 
look at the agency, not personal vendettas. Another one would be the student loan forgiveness debate, since the Biden administration basically just completely bypassed Congress to do that in a diktat. And that would be worth taking a look at. The last one I would add, Kyle, that I think is interesting to note would be to try to get some political accountability over the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. If you look at President Biden's approval ratings, he goes south of 50% in August of 2021, and he never comes back over 50% after that. And I think that image of American fecklessness and weakness that the Afghanistan withdrawal and the 13 service members who died, I think that stayed with voters. And I think if we see a victory for Republicans tonight, that impression that that event left on voters will have contributed to that more than may be understood. And so I do think Congress could be useful in trying to shed some light there on what happened and who was really accountable for what we saw. So that would be one place where I think also there is an opportunity for investigation. But to Kim's point, you want to keep these investigations focused on the issues and not on score settling. So one other thing that I would just add to that's going to be immensely important if Republicans take back over the House and just a few of the things Kate mentioned about agendas, she was talking about student loans, is that the House will once again have the ability to potentially sue the administration over certain actions that it claims did an end run around Congress. And this has been an issue with things like student loans is who actually has standing to say that they have injury. Very good case to be made that the House would. And if the administration, especially if it increasingly begins to turn toward more lawless type actions to get its agenda through, that is going to prove another check on the Biden agenda. But one fascinating dynamic is that this is a midterm election, the first election in a while that we haven't had a Donald Trump dynamic. He is not on the ballot. He is a private citizen living in Florida, though maybe not for long. Let's listen to President Trump teasing a big announcement. This is from a rally in Ohio with J.D. Vance on Monday night. Two years ago, we were a great nation, and we will be a great nation again. But not to detract from tomorrow's very important, even critical, election. And I would say, in the strongest way, it's a country-saving election. I'm going to be making a very big announcement on Tuesday, November 15th, at Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida. Kate, do we think this big announcement is what we think it is? And what do you make of the timing here, doing this, uh, teasing this right before the midterm? And what do you make of the music, Kate, too? <laughs> I, I was about to add the ominous music really adds something to the dynamic here. Well, Kyle, I mean, I think worth noting that this is at J.D. Vance's rally here ahead of the election, and Trump obviously decided to turn the event into more Trump intrigue, which is not a surprise, but does not reveal him to be really interested in what's necessarily good for the Republican Party ahead of the midterms. No great surprise there, but worth noting anyway. The answer is what Trump is announcing on 11-15 could change several times here in the next several days. I think there is a lot of, he likes to build this mystery here of, of announcing a run for president. The timing seems odd to me. I think if the smarter play might be to wait a little bit longer and try to see who else is jumping in and size up his chances a little bit better, but he may see some political benefit here. And we know that he is looking out for what he sees as his political benefit. Yeah. The other piece of this that I think is fascinating, Kim, is that we also know that the Justice Department is investigating these documents, classified documents, allegedly, that President Trump had at Mar-a-Lago. And so part of what may be playing into this early announcement is a bit of a political warning to the Justice Department, to Attorney General Merrick Garland, that if anything moves forward on that front in terms of a case against President Trump, that he's going to argue that he is running for president against the sitting president, Joe Biden, and that this is all a political attempt to get him. And so, Kim, I wonder how much that is playing into his thinking, because am I wrong that this would be 
a historically early announcement of a presidential run, given how long we have to go before 2024 still. Hugely early. So early that it makes me tired just thinking about how long the presidential cycle would be if he actually goes through with this. But you can't discount that as a motivation for coming out that early. Look, I think one of the reasons Trump is doing this is to attempt to scare off any rivals. And that was pretty evident when he shouted out Ron DeSantis at one of those rallies calling him Ron De Sanctimonious. He's letting him know, if you get in this race, you know, I'm going to destroy you. So trying to clear the field. But yeah, the possibility that he's doing this because he wants to maybe forestall the Department of Justice from bringing an indictment saying, hey, if you do this, it will be unprecedented. You're going after a rival or, you know, to get some traction off it and say, look, people, this is the politicized Department of Justice and all the more reason why you need to vote for me, vote for Republicans and get those guys out of the White House. I find it hard to believe that that isn't part of the calculation. Thank you, Kim and Kate. Thank you all for listening. You can email us at pwpodcast at wsj.com. If you like the show, please hit that subscribe button. And we will be back tomorrow with another edition of Potomac Watch. <music>